Do you and your coworkers have a quote board? You know, one of those write and wipes where you, you, you put up the quotes from different coworkers who've said something either silly or smart. You know, back the last time that uh, I worked at a place that had a quote board, one of the quotes of mine was, as the corporate expert in Windows clustering, I recommend you don't use Windows failover clustering. Well, lot's changed since those days, and failover clustering's gotten quite a bit better. Hyper-V has too. And in fact, these days, you can actually do Hyper-V live migration without ever having to touch failover clustering. In this micro nugget from my recent 70-414 CBT Nugget series, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to configure Hyper-V for exactly that clusterless live migration. You've got two options, uh, one of which is using the CRUD SSP, which you will probably never select, simply because you've got to be logged onto the server in order to complete the migration. Or you can use Kerberos and configure constrained delegation to support that live migration. Now, constrained delegation sounds really, it, it, it sounds really awful and challenging and in a big security hole. And it looks even worse whenever you start configuring it in Active Directory. But it is really, it is simply just allowing the, the protocol, and the SIFS protocol in this case, that one Hyper-V host requires in order to tell the other Hyper-V host, hey, um, I need to send to you a virtual machine using live migration. In fact, if I uh, just connect here remotely to my domain controller, uh, this is dc.company.pri, and I have up the Active Directory Users and Computers console. And if I take a look at computers, uh, the OU, and then Hyper-V1, I've already configured constrained delegation here under the delegation tab for the computer. I've set to trust this computer for delegation for specified services using any authentication protocol of the service type SIFS. And really all you do is you click add here and you select the user or computer you want uh, and then it will provide you a list of services that are there. You're looking for the SIFS service for the different Hyper-V hosts and or your VMM server depending on if you're using VMM to manage the infrastructure or not. Uh, I have done that here. I've also done that on the other Hyper-V host so that I can support it in both directions. So got it on one side, got it on the other side as well. Uh, back here under delegation, here it is for the other Hyper-V host. So two to one, one to two. With that set up, then I can use Kerberos in order to support migrating things and I can do it remotely, which makes things very, very nice. I can identify how many simultaneous live migrations are going to be allowed. Turning this up will ensure that you can get more VMs evacuated over a shorter period of time, but it could have some impact on resources. So you got to kind of be careful here. And as I mentioned back in the networking nugget, you can choose any available network or you can choose a specific IP address to use for live migration. When you are planning your infrastructure, we talked about this already before, it is probably a good idea to set a specific network interface aside so that you can support live migration. It's kind of a, there can sometimes be a need for that so you're not overusing your production network. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.